For this episode of Capturing Car Culture, we found ourselves at the largest private car collection in Malaysia. I consider Mr. JP Chin the Jay Leno of the East. JP wasn't born into wealth. His father was considerably poor and would never go on to own a new car in his entire lifetime. This motivated JP to work very hard and he earned his massive wealth in the tech and finance industry. Now he has some of the greatest cars ever produced in his collection. I really like how we started this conversation. You said it took you 30 years to build this collection. Yeah. It's gonna take what, two days for you to talk about it? If I didn't wanna go, go into it, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have two days. We have two hours. Okay. So hopefully we can run through it in two hours. Okay, yeah, I've done it in two hours, so not an issue, okay. I noticed right away, is that a mega cruiser? I got into the Hummer first. Then somebody told me that they actually there's a Japanese uh, Hummer. They only make for the army, the military in Japan. And they only have a very small number that they make for consumer. This is a Things Wire. This is uh, actually a, a real original Malaysian military vehicles. It's a six wheeler. Uh, the reason I bought this because I wanted to buy the uh, G-Class six wheeler and uh, the price quota was so much more. So I, since I need a six wheeler, it doesn't matter this or that, it's still a six wheeler to brag about. You and of course, up. this is the Hummer. Have you driven this on the street here? I did. Uh, it's humongous. It's difficult. <laughs> yeah. The first thing that I got out into my housing estate, I knocked down the CCTV <laughs> on the side because I didn't know the car was so white. <laughs> so this is a limited edition though. Okay, the H2 is nothing to shout about. I just want to collect it into one set. You have a Toyota FJ Cruiser? Yes, I have an FJ Cruiser. I bought this after I bought this one. Oh. This is something I don't understand. This car have made millions in production, and yet it's still a very collectible car. And this car was bought by a friend of mine and fully restored ground up. Every bolt and screw has been changed, the entire car. You got a couple Porsche yes, trackers, Yes, uh, huh? this are uh, my recent collection. So I actually was looking for the Lamborghini tractors because that is the one that I like the history of the Lamborghini tractors. But I couldn't find one first, so I found out this dealer in Belgium. Instead of selling me the Lamborghini, he tried to promote me the Porsche. I didn't know much about what Porsche tractor is about. All I knew was going to the internet, I found out that Porsche actually was asked to manufacture tractors for Germany back in the 50s. So originally, they outsourced the, the manufacturing to this Algeria or whatever. They called it Porsche. And later on, they have the Junior, the Standard, and there's one called Master. So then, how many of the vehicles that you own run? In fact, all the them are running. Every car or vehicle that I brought into my museum, at least I have driven it once, for the exception of one or two that I've never tried. But all the cars that you will see here later, I can assure you that I have driven it at least once. I really like the fact that you're collecting a lot of vehicles yeah. that may not be special. Yeah. They're just pedestrian cars yeah. that may not be special now, but they may be very special in the future. Yep, you're right. Okay, for example, this particular one, this is a car that when I was younger, they, <laughs> nobody cared. But today, the young, they are going after all these uh, funny, funny car. When it first came, it was uh, really like a piece of junk. Oh, well, you're restoring this here? Yeah, yeah, we did. This was how it came. Oh, that okay. is a rough, that's yeah. a rough shape. Yeah. So, so what we did was, uh, we, it took us a few months to buy the parks and do it. It's not fully done yet in Thailand. Uh, in fact, in the world now, a lot of people are chasing after this car. Okay, down here, uh, this is a Supra. The only reason that I bought this was there are only 20 units in the world, the Sat edition, the SRD. This is car number five of the 20. I've never seen this before. Yeah, Malaysia, this is the only one. It's just cool that this means something to you. It's cool to me that you understand that this is special yeah. and yeah. it needs to belong in your collection. Sure, and this is another storytelling vehicle that I have. This is a Lamborghini 3352R. This model is probably 1960 or 59 model. If you read the story between Lamborghini and Ferrari, 
Lamborghini used to make tractors, Ferrari makes sports car. But the Lamborghini owner, he also owned a Ferrari and he was not happy with the car and he condemned Enzo, they say, you don't know how they make sports car because he had a GT250, it wasn't good. So then after the argument, the guy said, I proved to you how I can do a better car. He actually took this particular model and put into the GT25, the Ferrari, and he showed to Enzo. Then after that, I mean, it became history now. In 1963, Lamborghini decided to make so-called sports car as well. So how did you find this? Okay, like I told you earlier on, I was looking for this car. I ended up buying the other three Porsche. And then finally, he found me this, the last piece. The reason I said you got three tractors, I need two containers. I still got a space. He wanted me to buy another Porsche. I said, no, get me a Lamborghini. So he found this one. So it just fit into my two containers. That's how it came in. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this side is uh, mainly my Japanese car collections. Uh, this, this particular section started uh, all because of my children. The, to them, these are classic. To me, it's the car that I was buying new when I was younger day. Okay, so here I have the um, Mitsubishi GTO. Then I have the NSX. Again, they did up the wrap of the Arten Senna edition. This is the Nissan Fairlady. Actually, my dream car is the 240Z. I still remember I was young, 1970, 69. One day when I was working as a coffee shop boy in my, my father's shop, there's one young man drove a 240Z, orange color. So I fell in love with the car. I said, one day I want to own that car. So the reason why I buy a 280Z, I've been chasing the 240Z for many years. And I keep seeing the price getting a bit crazy. So I decided not to chase them. I buy a 280Z, but one day I will come back to the 240Z. So when the 400Z came out, this one resembled the most to the 240Z. I quickly bought this one. So this is a Proto Edition, 400 units in the world. So even the number plate that you notice, I bought the number PRD, it's a PRO, Proto 400Z. Then what I have here is the Honda Integra. Remember I told you, I do a lot of events. One of the events I did was a one mix series using the Honda Integra Cup car, uh, which I brought in about 40 units to have all my friends racing in the one mix series. Uh, this one is a bit more unique, as most of the people in this part of the world know that uh, I have got the most quote-unquote Bugatti, the new Bugatti in this part of the world. Currently, I have got the Chiron and the Divo. So I've seen all your cars in Singapore at oh, the Bonded the Gallery, and they didn't let me shoot them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> unless I, I give them the permission. So anyway, last year, two years ago, when they retired the ICE engine, they decided to go hybrid or EV. They are going to discontinue with the internal combustion engine. So they have a few uh, spare engines, either from the test car or R&D car. So they actually asked me whether would I like to take up one of the engines. Initially, I was quite skeptical about it. But then after coming back from the trip, I decided that I just go for it. And now on the high side, it was a good decision. Okay, so since I couldn't bring the car back, so I bought the engine, they threw in two seats for me and the, the grill for me. So I had it displayed. So I said, this is still my Bugatti. And to complete the collection, I still have two toy cars. One Shilon, same color as my car, one Devo. Uh, my, my grandchildren love them, yeah, so they, they can drive the Chiron and the Bugatti as well. So obviously on this side, um, these are the K car collections that I have. Actually, I started off with the Suzuki Cappuccino. Um, I, the one that I miss out of the three is the Honda Beat. So I have the Mazda Auto Zam, okay? This is the failure of the three when they launched it, uh, the K car during the oil crisis. Suzuki Cappuccino and Honda Beat sold the most. And this was so-called a failure, but apparently now it become a collector's, even in the US. And this particular one is the son or the grandchildren of the K car. This is the Malaysian version of the Perodua Kancha, also the 600cc engine. Uh, it, it, in Japan, they market it as a Daihatsu. Here, they, they market it as a Perodua, which is a Malaysian brand. But actually, it's 100% Daihatsu, they just rebrand it. So we have the Suzuki Cappuccino and I have this Autozam. This is an amazing car. Drive like a go-kart, Galvin doors. I think in the US now, it's one of the very collectible. And then after that, uh, because I didn't have the Honda bit, so I decided to buy the continuations Honda 660, 660cc. This is a launch edition, car number 38 out of 
660. Then after that, for the fun of it, I like the Daihatsu coupon. They do have a little bit of resemblance to the GTR. So I actually bought this body kit from uh, Liberty Walk, Japan, original kit, to dress it up like a GTR. But I also buy a toy car to dress it up, mini, mid and large version. When I have function, I will line up three of them together. Remember early on I told you that um, when I started to buy the American car, this bunch of car was the first batch of car that I actually went to the internet and bought 30, 30 world cars. It's really interesting to me because this is something that you never grew up around. Yeah. But now you've collected so many of these. Yeah, I have the story. Every car there is a story, you know. You go to the internet, you can still find a picture of this car, which actually was originally owned by an American basketball player. Are any of these cars popular in Malaysia? No. I bought this car in St. Louis, and I also bought this car in St. Louis. I was there. Okay, this is a tribute car to the Yanko 427 engine. Then I got two Corvettes here. They are all similar car. This particular car is actually technically you can consider as a brand new car. It's probably about 300, 200 miles on the clock, up, down, up, down the ramp for show. The unique part of this car, you come over and just have a look. The window sticker of this car is still on it. The new car window sticker where they display the price of the oh, car. It's, it has it's, never been removed. It's almost like it's melted off. Yes, yes. And, and the first thing when the car came in, I told my guy, do not tear it, leave it as the way it is. So it is a brand new car. The window sticker is still on it. To prove from, that. From, from 1978. 1978. Quickly here, these are the American car that I bought uh, two years, three years ago, because I started to buy something that you had to find to impress the Malaysian. So I actually buy the vintage. These are the 1920s Ford Model T, Model A. And this is the Brass Era Ford Model T. Any car they built before 1915 or 15, they actually used Brass, which is a Brass Era Ford. This is the only car that I never driven because I couldn't start it. Because <laughs> you, uh, it, it's no. very uh, easy to break your arm if you yeah, yeah, start yeah. it, right? Actually, the guy, the dealer who sold me the car, actually gave me a video, they started driving the car, but came here, I, I couldn't start it. Then on this side is what they call the Godfather series. So these are the cars that are being used in the Godfather movie, especially this particular one. When the, uh, the Godfather was shot in the fruit store, uh, he fell over the car. Uh, this is the similar model that they have used in the movie. So I call the Godfather series. And here I have a, a fleet of uh, the Mustang car collection. I have the Eleanor, I have two of that. It's the same car that actually made by the same supplier in the US for the movie. So I have one, this is a show car. The other one is car to be driven. So I have the um, 350 GT. Now these are originally very collectible. Of course, I got the latest 5 liter Mustang as well. Okay, this is the latest uh, Lotus Emira Mano, which I got it last week. This is the 1886. This is not the original Benz Payton motor wagon. Big famous by Carl Benz's wife, driven this car for 50 kilometers back in 1886. So this is the actual look-alike car. They're being designed the same way. It can be started, it can move around. Show you everything. Uh, so here, of course, we got the fuel tank. This is the coolant tank. It's a single cylinder engine. Uh, piston's about this big, so it's a 1,000 cc, believe it or not. Uh, these are the two oil supplies, uh, gravity fed, uh, no oil pump, it just drips straight out and then spills everywhere. This here is the uh, carburetor pretty much where the air and fuel mix is, igniter and battery box. So how to start this thing is, first of all we connect the battery, 6 volt battery, then we turn on the oil supplies. Now uh, usually we turn the fuel supply to get the float up to level. Uh, once it's up to level, then we can start it, then, but it's already over full, so we just turn it off. Uh, then we turn on the ignition right here. Instead of having an actual switch or a push button, it's just a bolt that you unscrew, and it closes the contact. And yeah, so that's right here, yeah. Unscrew, it. and it should be on. And this here is the choke. You can unscrew from this side, and it'll open up all the air vents to allow more air in. 
Uh, how do we know the ignition is on? We can press this button here and you can hear the relays buzzing. Um, this usually kicks off sometimes, so we have to be careful. Ah, there. Can you hear it? And yeah, she's ready to start, so here we go. Ready? Hey, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor, go check out the Haggerty Drivers Club. 24-7 roadside assistance with flatbed towing, subscription to our award-winning magazine, and more. Sign up today, link's in the description. You only got one control, accelerator, and the brake. So to slow down, I just pull it back. It will slow down. And the reason why there's only a single wheel steering is essentially at that point in time, the technology has not come to a point you can design a good steering system. So to cut a long story short, they make a very sim simple bicycle uh, steering wheel that you can steer the car. Just for backup, huh? In case it goes out. I just, I love the fact that we're actually on the yeah, this public is the, road. Yeah, the oldest. 18? 18, 18, 1886. 1886. Got it. <laughs> Are you guys doing rolling shots? <laughs> This is making me laugh more than anything else. The fact that you guys are doing rolling shots on, on us. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> There's no suspension. This is, yeah. <laughs> we are the suspension. The, the trees are just whizzing by so fast. They're just. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Uphill. We yeah. slow down because we're yeah. going uphill. That's yeah, why I need, I need to downhill. Don't worry, we got it. Downhill, yeah. it's gonna make it. Uh, How much horsepower does that? Three? One. One, one horsepower, no, no, okay. It's not one. One horsepower is all you need, I guess. So we are going downhill, so we are quite safe. Oh, wow, <laughs> this is really fast. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. You have the, the oldest single cylinder automobile, gasoline. Then you have the uh, Lotus Emira, ice engine turbocharge. And then you got the Lotus Elata, which is a full EV. So the full generation of car is being displayed here. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> One, well, no, it's first human powered. <laughs> human powered, yeah. <laughs> We're missing the horses. I'm smiling ear to ear because <laughs> I, I can't stop smiling because that was just so much fun. So here, I mentioned to you early on after all my speeding things, so I went into car racing. So these are the actual car that we actually have raced in the Malaysian 12-hour uh, endurance, called the Medica Endurance. So for 10, 12 years as a major, Okay, non-professional, we actually do these races. The best result that we had was in 2003, where my son, my eldest son, won the, the race in 2003, and my son then was the youngest driver ever win the 12-hour endurance in the medical endurance race, and that record are being held until today, at the age of 18. So this is the actual car that was driven, but we took out the stickers. And this is a Honda 
คับค้าอินเดียก็คับค้าเดววีดูวันมิกซีรีส์ในปี2006 I brought in about 40 cars so basically in one take all the professional be lawyer doctor banker to do a one mix series so you know in racing everybody want to win so we have to control the car in the one mix like F1 so that if we win you are better driver it's not about your car so everybody so this is one of the car that I use I actually brought this car to Macau which I race in Macau with my son as well so oh, this is a, a this is a the top car engine this is a spare engine that we use This is the R34 that we talk about. Very famous car. In 2004, 24-hour n e r v e r i n g Class A8 champion. This is the exact car that being used. It was owned by a Japanese a guy who run the team. After he retired, he liked my son so much that he only offered my son to buy this car, not anybody else. So he gave us a spare engine as well. This is a car is being used for homologating the R34 then. So this is the first generation. This is car number one, the R34, the NER edition. I can't believe you have this car. Yeah. This car is so historic. Yeah. Okay. This is one of the uh, first hybrid hypercar that I bought, 2014. This is a McLaren P1, 375 unit in the world. This is car number 128, and I even. Have a Malaysian number plate called MCP1. That's your real plate. This is a real plate, but of course I do a fancy plate on it. The one that I mentioned to you, this is a Crazy Rich Asian. So this was the car being used in the movie in the hangar party backdrop. So this is the actual car. So this GT40 is obviously not the original GT40 made by Ford. The difference between a r e p l i c a and this one is that this car is made according to the original spec. Which is a monocoque chassis, full aluminium monocoque chassis. It took them 600 man hours to fabricate the body. So uh, obviously the body is a, a fiber body. Otherwise everything is our original. Come with air conditions, and uh, even the color, the Gulf oil color, it is licensed. I have to pay 20,000 US to have this color on this car. No way. Seriously, okay. So I actually have a certificate, certified by Gulf. So I have to pay for it first. So if you paint the car without them, they can ask you to tear it down. This is the SL. These are cars that the price will go up. But what more important is this particular car I bought in Germany. It's like a ponton, but this is a two-door coupe, fully restored, ground up. Everything is new. It's basically like a brand new car. This car cost me about 250,000 e u r o Okay. Uh, Ground-up restoration. So every bit that you see in this car is new. Okay, leather, everything. It's like a brand new car. This is like your movie car selection. These are the movie team car. That's right. These are the car that actually been um, shown or used in a movie. The Eleanor is gone in 60 seconds, night and day. This one actually I bought from a museum, Olo Olo Museum in US. Then of course this is James Bond car. Oh, you have a DeLorean. Yes. Anybody who doesn't know car will know this car. Yeah. So, uh, but I was told that in America now they have this uh, Back to the Future kit to dress up this car, which I'm still trying to do. Whether I should I do it or I just leave it. I think so, it's cool that it's sitting in, in stock form. Yeah. It's a wonder that these run at all still. You know, you have to really like. So I got it quite cheap from the U.S., but the engine was gone, so I have to fully restore the engine. So this is a Volkswagen Beetle. Nothing to shout about, but the price keep picking up. So I have a reason for every car that I keep here. So then, all of your sons are into cars too. Uh, my two elder son, H.G., because of the bonding reason, I dragged them out from school to race together with me. That's too bad. <laughs> that's that's so. But but o r them. Well. Or them. That was back in the uh, early 2000 because for when I was younger days, so I was working hard to never have time with my children. So when they were teenager, I thought, you know, it's like quite distant apart. So I, the only time that they are very competitive, but they don't like racing, they don't like car, they only play computer game. But I forced them to go racing. Actually, my eldest son, I achieved first time racing. I put him into a single seater, spent millions of dollars crashing car, but. The next year, he become Asian champion. Okay, these are the Porsche collection. The, I, I love Porsche, but the only thing I don't understand why the collection value of Porsche is like the older it is, the more expensive. This is a 1973 model. So this is a 73 model 911T. This is 911S, but in US, this is double the price of this. Why I don't know. 
Okay, this is um, RS4 liter, one of the 600 that I will make uh, in the world. The last of the 997. This is the best car I've ever driven, period. Yeah, this is a very nice car. This one, like any 911, but this is a 911R, 918 units in the world, very collectible. At the height, it was auctioned 1 million pounds in UK. Now this car is going about 600,000 pounds. And uh, this is a Porsche 911 SE. My young son, initially, he loved all the new car, but he decided to go to the old car. He actually spent some money to do up this car. This is the F12 TDF, one of the 700 new ever produced. And the price is going up almost uh, 30% every year. Then here, I have the Lamborghini, I have the Countach, which I bought from the US. I have the Diablo, which is only 40 units in the world, car number eight. So that is what a, a beautiful car. The Countach is uh, the price is pink. I bought this for about ten years ago in US for one hundred forty thousand US. I believe now it's going about seven to eight hundred thousand US now. So this is a Spider that I I bought and I sold. I bought it back. This is a five seven five Manolo HGTC also limited. This is one of the very few Ferrari that I bought when I first make it. This is a three four eight, but the one that really gave me a bit of reason to buy this is the 308. Why this car? Because back in the 70s, when I was young, I always watched this uh, TV series called Magnum PI. Okay, Tom Selleck always jump out of the car, that 308. I fell in love with that car. I said, one day I want to have that car. And that one day, it just came about about 20 years ago, you know. So I said, I have to buy this car, okay. So the shape is fantastic, looks beautiful. And then I got the two Mondia four-seater. So this car is something that a lot of people ask me why this car. This is a dream come true for me. That I own the car. That the other car that I wanted, the 240Z. Maybe you sell your 240Z to me. <laughs> <laughs> so how often do you get to drive this? Um, I, I well, not really often. When I first had it, I I drove it probably once every couple of months. But the last I drove this one was uh, three weeks ago. We have a Ferrari gathering, so we drove this car there. Okay. That's incredible. Yeah. Do, do your sons still race right now? Uh, no. Uh, my two sons uh, actually retired the same time I did because I said, hey, we have burned enough money, let's get to work. But I think by the end of this year, I want to revive the One Mix series so that I'm going back to drive again, to race again. Okay. So the one that I'm working on is the, uh, the Toyota. GR86? The GR86. Because I saw the American program, the one makes it. Oh my it's God. Gee, I wanted to do the let, let me Let me come race with you guys. I have my racing licenses yeah, in the US. Okay, okay. Let me come. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> actually, I want to do this uh, one make series. The Malaysian go to US and race. The US guy come here and race, you know, to, to build the relationship, you know. I, I love racing. I, I still love, but I don't race now. But I don't mind going to the gentleman races. I, I mean, not so competitive, you know. Then we put handicap so you don't feel that you are out of place, you know? Okay, uh, the last section that I'm gonna move you to is the British car collection. For the fun of it, because I've collected a lot of British cars, so I decided, ah, I call it a British collection. So mostly Jaguar that I have here, Morgan, I don't think you see much of this in the US. No, okay. I don't think I've ever seen this. Kind this of is car. a very interesting car, Morgan. Morgan is a very good coach maker in UK. They make car, but they don't make engine or spare park. So the engine, this is a BMW V8, uh, 4.8 liter. The headlight, they use a mini headlight. Oh. Okay. It opens like wood. that. Yeah. They are the only car in the world that chassis to make of wood. Right, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> this is Morgan. not wood No, anymore. this is aluminum. Okay, this is a modern Morgan. Um, uh, very classy looking. I love the shape of this car. I really love this car when I bought this car. And the coach, uh, the interior, they do it very nicely. The light here is the Jaguar XL to use the light. So they don't actually make their own thing because they don't have the wall lip. So everything is handmade. How does it feel to drive this then? <sighs> Straight line. <laughs> it doesn't handle that well. Right. Uh, it just drives. It's just for the feeling. Yeah. The, for the feeling, the you know. Look the and the look nostalgia. And thing. Of course, the Lotus, the handling is good. The Rosa, the two door. That one is actually I bought from a person in US, in New York. Right hand drive in New York. 2004, New York State. New York State Safety Inspection Certificate. So, 
Okay, the Jaguar collection, I have the XK120. It's a 1954 model. Again, I bought this car from Belgium, fully restored ground up. It was the fastest car in the world then, 120 miles an hour. It's called XK120. So in 2014, I have the fastest car in the world. It's my current P1. And in 2024, I have the fastest car, so-called the Bullet or the Devo. So I, I like this sort of uh, bragging ego, you know, to say that you have something. At one time, the motorbike collection that I have out of the top 10 0 to 100 bike, fastest 0 to 100 bike in the world, I had five of them in my collection. That was three years ago. Of course, things changed now. OK, this is the Jaguar E-Time. Uh, voted the most beautiful car, sports car, in the 20th century, the E-Type. So this is the last of the E-Type Coupe, uh, 1973 model. Because I like the Jaguar two-door, these are the XJ, also the XJR. Uh, this one, I do use it. This is the modern Jaguar Project 7. Okay, this was, car was built to, to remember the seven Le Mans victories that I have. So this car is only 250 units in the world, one of the 250. I like the sound, it's amazing. The, the V8 sound. So this is one of the cars that we like. My son likes to drive to the tunnel to get the reflection of the sound. And this is the uh, original MG, now sold to China, the MG brand. Uh, Malaysian car in the 50s. Um, I didn't buy this car. A car dealer took my Rolls Royce 01 and destroyed the car, got no money to pay me. I took this car. <laughs> <laughs> in the street, which is in the blessing for me because this car, the price I pick up, the rules I gone down. <laughs> so, do you know how many cars you own? Does it fluctuate? Uh, actually, uh, my son say I have about 180 cars, but I don't consider that is my collection because some of those are normal cars. I would say the real collection car that I have probably about 140, 150. It's the question of how many cars I own. Then I have about 200 cars I own. But they are not actually car for collection. So I'm more inclined to say that a car that have a bit of collection value, then I say, this is my collection, okay? But even in my collection, there are cars that I use. For example, this car I use, it's still my collection. So it depends how you look at it. So that's a clutch. Uh-huh. This is a brake. Okay. <laughs> this, is the, this is the accelerator. Okay. So, uh, it goes. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. You're All right. To it. Okay. So you go, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no problem. Oh. <laughs> this is a nice Lamborghini. Whoa! This is pretty cool! I hope it has the turning radius. Is it gonna make it? What the hell? I can honestly say I've never driven a tractor before. This is my first time driving a tractor. It's pretty fun. What do I do?